Welcome to another edition of High School Rewind, available only on Xfinity On Demand. We are bringing you top of Utah tournament coverage from Northridge High School as the hosting Knights prepare to host the Box Elder Bees in this consolation game. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Dane Stewart here to bring you tonight's game. We will start first with the Box Elder Bees. They come in one and one overall. Those games happening in this very tournament. Coming off uh, a victory over the Weber Warriors and looking to extend their winning ways here against the Knights. They've got a guy that is leading the way and one of the top scorers in all of 4A, that being Shad Watson, coming in with 25 points a game and six boards per game. Again, that's in just two games, but he has been an offensive juggernaut so far for the bees. A couple other names to watch for. Four box elder include Jeff Sever and uh, Meekum down low. These two uh, averaging double figures in scoring as well with 13 and 12 points respectively for the bees. In fact, Sever coming off a 17 and 7 performance in that victory over uh, the Weaver Warriors and uh, Watson a 22 and 9 board performance against the Warriors. Those two were absolutely fantastic. We'll switch now and talk a little bit about the Knights. And Last year, this was a team that contended in Region 1. They were a tough out in that Region 1. They had a lot of great shooters, and one of those shooters returning this year, that being Jacob Bigler, one of the best shooters in the entire state. He, If he gets going from distance, bring an umbrella. Take cover, because it is going to rain. He uh, can absolutely light it up. But he's actually not leading this Northridge team in scoring through two games. That honor belongs to Diane Lake, an absolutely athletic player guard for, uh, for the Knights. Has 16 points per game coming into tonight's contest. Again, that's just through two. These Knights are one and one as well. Bigler has 13 points a game. And then Jace Colby, the big tight end from the Northridge football team with uh, 12 per game. This is a Knight team that relies on balanced scoring and uh, they're going to need some balance here tonight to get a victory tonight over a very good box elder team as uh, they're coming off a loss to the Woods Cross Wildcats in their game yesterday. These two teams trying to finish out this tournament on a winning note as they prepare for non-region play heading out uh, from this point. This is going to be a good contest to really show where these two teams are at as they prepare for non-region play right around the corner. And with that introduction now, let's send you down to the floor where we'll get the game underway. Ready for the opening tip. This is tipped ahead to Bigler. Northridge with starting possession. Launch the three. What did we say? <laughs> 10 seconds in. And Jake Bigler with the big three-pointer. It's 3-0 three Northridge. As they won that tip, he had a smile. He knew exactly what he was going to do as this ball is out to the Bees. Inbounded, this is Watson. He's going to fire from just inside the arc. No good. Rebounded by Colby down low. And now Cortland Prince brings it up. And Bigler was going to launch another one. He stepped out of bounds as he caught it. Turned over to Box Elder. Watson brings the ball up for Box Elder. His pass a little high. Make him eventually able to bring it in, though now a jump ball situation. Possession arrow will leave it here with the Bees. McFarland inbound to Watson. Picked up by Lake inside and a foul called on Jace Colby. As going to the line to shoot two will be Daniel Diedrichson. Diedrichson made his first free throw. His second attempt finds the net as well. Foul was called on Colby. That was his first. It's Perkins. Boy, has that one knocked away. Instead, the foul called on Darius McFarland of Box Elder. Diane Lake to inbound finds Drew Perkins. Lake in the corner. Not going to dribble out. Working against Watson. Has that one knocked away. Able to regain it. Now in the corner to Bigler, another three. This one front of the iron then came across, rebounded strongly by Diedrichson out to Watson quickly who brings it up the floor. Turns back inside now, pops it out to McFarland. Just a sophomore, Darius McFarland, as that jumper is no good. Bigler chases it down and Perkins brings it up. McFarland, that's, that's a big boy for a sophomore. Already in the starting lineup here for Box Elder. What a nice drive that time by Cortland Prince, though he couldn't get the finish. Rebounded by Box Elder. In their road purple uniforms, the Bees, which is only natural, seeing as how Northridge 
playing on their home floor in this tournament. Farland passes back out. Now Watson a distance three. Dial it up, young man. Shad Watson gives the Bees their first lead of the game, a 5-3 lead. As that three-pointer was from about 23 feet, 22, 23 feet, a long one. Bigler trying to answer. Can't do it. Rebounded by Diedrichsen. And Jacob Bigler started off well with that first three. They are the only points for Northridge as he has missed a pair since then. Ball chased down by Meekum. Picks up his dribble. McFarland's going to slow it up and call a new play. Diane Lake closes out on Watson. And of course, this is a little intriguing. Watson was the quarterback on the football team, and Diane Lake a, a corner. Of course, that doesn't necessarily translate to the basketball floor. Is going up and scoring the point is Jeff Sever. And then he got fouled on the shot by Prince Sever, going to go to try to complete the three point play. That foul was called on Prince his first as Dallas Mokobust just checks in. Free throw from Sever is good. And it is an 8 nothing run for the Bees. In fact, the quick firing, Jacob Bigler came out. Nice drive by Lake as he found all sorts of room on the drive, able to lay it in. And those are the first points in three minutes for Northridge. Boy, a nice pass that time. It looked like it was going inside for Sever. Found its way to Meekum as Sever can't get that one off cleanly. Coming back the other way is Northridge. Lake going to try to drive. Boy, passes off to Colby who made a nice move along the baseline. This ball thrown down quickly by McFarland and then losing it was Meekum turned over and back to Northridge. Drew Perkins brings it up. Drew just a sophomore as well. We mentioned that. Oh, boy, what a nice play that time. The screen allowed Colby a free lane to the hoop, but he couldn't finish the play. We'll finish our sophomore sensation talk here a little later. Well, here they are again, McFarland the sophomore. It's being guarded by Perkins the sophomore. Now McFarland going to shoot the three. Count it. Darius McFarland dials up a three-pointer in the Bees. Are off to a great start here. Midway through the first, they have an 11-5 lead. Is a foul going to be called here? I believe on Watson on the drive put on by Perkins. And they actually gave the foul to McFarland. That is his second. So Tanner Hennessy comes on for him. Is Colby off the inbound? That one left a little short in the rebound. Brought in by Sever. I mentioned a game yesterday against Weaver. He had seven of them. Now Sever hands off to Watson. Watson with the pull-up jumper, no good, and rebounded by Mokobus. Quickly down with Diane Lake, and you see the speed and athleticism of Diane Lake, and then he gets the turnover, a lazy inbound pass, and Diane Lake with his first unofficial interception of the basketball season. Now he's trying to drive on Watson. Nice spin move goes up, that one no good. Challenge, Mokobus able to get it back, puts it back up, and the Knights need a charge back because it's now an 11-9 box elder lead. Now this is Meekum being guarded by Mokobus. Near side, Lake almost knocked that out of Watson's hands, and then a foul here. Going to be called against Diane Lake. TJ Price just checked in for Northridge. And he's got a long body as that's him who just gathered the rebound. Here's the drive by Prince and a blocking foul call. And that is a tough, tough hit that Sever just took as he tried to draw the charge. That was the first foul on Sever as Cortland Prince at the line made his first free throw, his second one trying to tie things up here in the first, and he does. 11 apiece. Here's Hennessy with it. Now Watson, he's going to fire the three. That's a shot he can make, and he does. He had four three-pointers 
in that victory over Weber. And another one here for Shad Watson. And that time trying to thread the pass was Perkins. Ends up with Price and a jump ball. It will stay here with Northridge. Inbounded to Price and a foul called here on the reach by Diedrichson. This ball inbounded by Perkins up to Lake. Perkins, boy, he had some space. Nice find underneath the Prince. That shot is blocked. Coming back for some help with Sever as the ball will stay here with Northridge, but a nice recovery defensively for Box Elder. Inbounded back to Lake, who just stays in play. Perkins thought about the three. Now he's going to drive, trying to give it off to, or excuse me, to Lake, who was all alone. They couldn't connect. It was a nice idea, though. Now here's Hennessy. Boy, a nice cut that time as Meekum got lost amongst that defense but then had it knocked away. No one picks up Prince. He comes down. That one just rolls out and rebounded by Sever. Now Watson going to bring it back the other way. Slow things up here. Still 14-11, Box Elder with the lead. As that one is knocked out, it will stay here with Box Elder. As they say, it was off of Perkins. Inbounded in the corner with Meekum. A three-pointer that rims out. As Box Elder fans a little disappointed with that one. Now this is Prince. Hands it off to Mokul Bus. Back to Lake now, being guarded by Watson, and this has been an entertaining matchup all day. Nice pass down low to Price as that shot was left short. Under a minute to play here in the opening quarter. Bigler ready to check back in at the next whistle for the Knights as Watson puts this on the floor. Now backing it back out to Jerem Meekum, another sophomore on this B's squad. Here's the drive by Hennessy. Gives it off to Diedrichson. That shot was long. Sever got a man in the air. Goes back up and just misses it as he drew contact. And Jeff Sever back to the line for two more. First free throw was no good for Sever. His second attempt is. And it is a 15-11 lead for Box Elder now with 24 seconds left. Bigler did just check back in for the Knights as Diane Lake Heads to the bench. We've got a pair of tens working at it hard as Hennessy trying to stay with Perkins, doing a nice job. This ball gets to Price, back to Perkins. Three seconds left. He's going to have to put a shot up outside. Three pointer from Mocha Bust on the horn. Count the bucket. The junior Dallas Mocha Bust was just waiting and got the pass from Perkins. Hits the three, and it's 15-14 at the end of one. Second quarter underway. Bees with a one-point advantage as Watson brings it across the timeline. Over to Hennessy. Pressure zone defense as some space found by Watson. Hits the back of the iron. He's able to track down his own rebound. How about the athleticism of Watson carving up the key? Oh, couldn't finish it off as Price got the rebound. Bigler fire the three. That one's good by Jake Bigler. His second three-pointer of the game. Didn't have a lot of help. Fired it up. And Northridge retakes the lead as that one is blocked by Price. Can't be cleared as Diedrichson missed it. Watson missed the putback. Another putback by Sever. Eventually, that one's able to drop. Tied up at 17 is action really picking up here at Northridge High between these two teams. Mokobus picked up his dribble. Bigler now with it. Now Prince going to put it on the floor. He will pull up from just beyond the free throw stripe. No good. And brought in by Shad Mortensen for Box Elder. Watson across the timeline. Mortensen being guarded by Perkins. Top of the key with Diedrichson. Watson now coming around the screen. And Shad Watson, another three-pointer tonight. He is really shooting the ball well as Northridge going to call a timeout. Coach Sims not real pleased with his defense.
Perkins brings the ball up for Northridge. Trailing after the Watson three. He has shot the ball really well here in the early going. Now Diane Lake surveying the floor, trying to cross over Mortensen. Nice find underneath. Colby able to try to clean it up, but couldn't get buckets. Myson Stott has come on for Northridge. He's number 33. This ball finds its way to Meekum. He's going to shoot the tray. That one no good. Rebounded by Bigler. Bigler for three. His third three-pointer of the game. Jacob Bigler ties it up at 20 apiece. You mentioned his ability to just seemingly catch fire in back-to-back three-pointers for Bigler. In the second quarter, keeping Northridge in this one. Now Hennessy with it, trying to use the Diedrichson screen. Going to pass it outside to Mortensen. This is Hennessy going down low. Colby there, able to get a hand on it. Then a foul call on Diedrichson. Trying to keep Colby off. Chad Watson comes back on for Box Elder. Approaching the midway point here of this second quarter. Diane Lake, able to be patient. Ah, that drive by the junior Lake. Watson brings it back up quickly as Northridge now retakes the lead. First time since early on, and then Lake gets called for the foul. He thought he picked it cleanly. But a foul called on Lake. Diane Lake has been a monster defensively. This ball finds his way back to Watson. He gets a good look. Nice closeout by Lake as Perkins gets the board, and then an over-the-back call here, I believe, on Sever. It was on Sever. That was his second foul and the 16th foul on the Bees. Next time, Northridge into the line to shoot. Perkins passes this off to Bigler. This is Meekum who gets the defensive assignment as that one rolls off. Two Knights hit the deck that time. This ball was loose, picked up by a trailing Meekum. He tried to drive and has it knocked out from behind off of Stock. Prince checks back in for Northridge. This ball is inbounded to Jeff Sever. We'll hand off to Watson. Three-pointer. That one's good by Tanner Hennessy. And the Bees feeling it from beyond the arc. Well, both teams really. Bigler's got a few of them. Of course, Mokobus hit the one at the end of the first. Watson, Hennessy. Box Elder has several who have been able to make the distance shot. 23-22 now. Box Elder advantage. Lake looking to drive. Boy, great defensive effort that time put on by Mortensen as the Northridge shot is missed. Watson brings it up. Good point guard, very good ball handling, able to get through a pair of Knights as he did so. Trying to shake loose was Hennessy, and then gets called for the travel. Darius McFarland is checked back in for Box Elder. He picked up two fouls early on in the first quarter and has been sitting since then. A 1-3-1 zone now by the Bees. This is a three-pointer by Bigler! His third straight three-pointer. That one from well beyond the arc. 25-23 Northridge. And now the Northridge student section letting Box Eller have it. Colby with the steal and the lay-in. And Northridge with a four-point lead. This is a game of some athletic bigs as Jace Colby has that fleet footedness. Here's a shot put up by Mortensen, no good, out of bounds. Ball back to the Knights. Want to finish that thought on Jace Colby. This was a kid who has a tight end, had a couple touchdowns this year of 50 or greater yards. 
Really good speed for his size. This ball turned over to the Bees, and now McFarland leading it up. And that one knocked away by guess who? Jace Colby. Bigler for three, and that one missed. That was a pure heat check. He comes back smiling. Mortensen over to McFarland now. Here's a three-pointer by Hennessy. And the Bees back to within one. Good old-fashioned shootout tonight from the ridge. Pair of tens working at it. Finds its way to Prince in the corner. Now Lake with it. Pops it outside to Perkins. Again, really nice defensive play by Hennessy, closing off the drive. Good pump fake from Lake. Die in Lake. The baseline jumper gives the Northridge a three-point lead again here with one minute left in the second quarter. Watson for three around the screen. Shad Watson ties things up. That's, I think, his third or fourth three-pointer of this game. And the turnover is that pass broken up. Watson with the drive. Missed, but the putback is good from Jared Meekum. The sophomore gives the Bees the lead again with 35 seconds left here in the opening half. Drew Perkins brings the ball up over to Bigler. He's going to shoot the three. That one rims off. Now McFarland brings it down. 20 seconds remaining. He will hand off to Watson. Quickly over and a nice move here by Mortensen recognizing the open floor. And Box Elder now leads by four and a timeout before the inbound. Taken, I believe, by Box Elder, maybe some blood. Official timeout will have a substitution. 10 seconds left. Northridge trailing by four as Perkins brings it up. He's being hounded by Wiscombe. He's gonna have to just put this one up at the horn. That one no good. Half comes to a close and it was a half of lights out shooting. 33-29 advantage to the Bees at the break. Second half is underway. Knox Elder a little late getting out as the rest of the team eventually come in. They've got five out here, so we're going to get play going. Diane Lake with it now for Northridge. Of course, saw some scrum trelescent shooting in that first half by both squads, even though that shot was missed, rebounded by Sever. Watson brings the ball up the floor. McFarland now with it, looking inside to Watson. A pair of Knights there. Colby can't believe the call, says that was straight up, but Watson's gonna go to the line to shoot too. Watson made his first free throw. Second one is good as well. 35-29, the B lead here early on in the third quarter. As Perkins brings the ball back up the floor. To dry, that was closed off well by the senior Watson. Over to Bigler, back up top with Perkins. He looks to drive, that shot was missed. McFarland had the closeout, rebounded by Watson. Lake picks him up at midcourt. Lake breaks that one up well. He's gonna bring it back up the floor now. Out to Bigler, nice pump fake, now the drive. Pulls up from 15, Bigler's shot is missed. And boy, that could have been an over the back call on Prince, but no call made. Colby able to pick it up and lay it in. That ball almost turned over. McFarland able to recover, and then a nice jumper by Darius McFarland. 37-31, advantage to Box Elder. 
Screen set, now kicked outside to Lake. He's going to take the three after thinking about it a little bit. That one is no good. Rebounded easily by Diedrichsen as Watson will bring it up the floor. Caught Lake who had slipped down, but Lake able to knock it out. Now a loose ball on the floor. Jump ball called. And this will stay here with Box Elder before it gets too chippy. Inbounded to Sever. Watson, he's going to look to drive. Passes out of this one. Three-pointer from McFarland. That one front of the iron goes out of bounds. It'll stay here with Box Elder out off of Prince. Watson on the inbound three. Count it from Shad Watson. And an ineffable shooting night for the senior guard. That's... I think unofficially his fourth or fifth three-pointer. I lost count in that first half. It is a nine-point box elder lead. Nice deception that time by Prince. He gets fouled as he drives to the hoop. He'll go for to shoot two at the line. So one for two at the line from Prince. 40-32 the score. Is he... Heads to the bench as Mokubus checks in for him. Watson on the drive was trying to go underneath the Diedrichsen. It was broken up and out of bounds. Inbound it was attempted for Diedrichsen. Broken up. Now Northridge with numbers the other way. Bigler delayed it. Missed it. Colby to clean it up. And Jace Colby, that's not the first time he's done that tonight. A nice put back by the senior. And then a foul on the other end of the floor. Called on. on Perkins, maybe, yeah. Second foul on Perkins, inbounded to McFarland. And that time, the straight-up Colby broke it up. Bigler looking to drive, and McFarland pays it back as he strips that one from Bigler. Nice job filling the lanes on the drive. No good rebound and put back by Daniel Diedrichsen. The junior in the right place at the right time. That was a textbook fast break. Filling the lanes nicely was McFarland, and then Diedrichsen not giving up on it. What a crossover that time put on by Perkins. Well, that was broken up by Meekum. Inbounded to Colby. Now here's Bigler coming off the Colby screen. Count it! His first three of the second half, and his fourth of the game by Bigler. midway through the third. Diedrichsen working against Colby. Count the bucket and the foul. Colby, he brought those arms down as he leaves them hanging, trying to say that was straight, but bucket is good. Diedrichsen to the line. Free throw from Diedrichsen is good. This is a 45-37 lead for Box Elder, and a shout out to our cameraman and statistician, Vince Francis, is Bigler with five three pointers in this game. But this time it's Drew Perkins with the drive and lay in. Pulling Northridge back to within six. McFarland on the baseline, pulled up his dribble. Diedrichsen working against Colby again. That time can't get it. And then a foul on Diedrichsen going for the rebound. That was the third foul on Diedrichsen, so he heads to the bench. Also checking in for Northridge was T.J. Price as we've got a foul on the drive. I believe this is going to be called on Watson. Bigler inbounds this to Perkins. Ball finds its way to Mokobust. Lake with it, giving it to Bigler. Trying to use the price screen, but that defended beautifully in a timeout taken by the Knights. Inbounded to Perkins. Just under three minutes left here in the third quarter. A six point advantage for the Bees. Lake on the drive, tried to give it to Price. Price couldn't bring it in, turned over to Box Elder.
Watson scanning the floor. Gives it to Meekum, who came off of the screen that was set by Sever. Back with Watson, and that one found Lake in the area you don't want it to find. That three-pointer, couldn't tell if it got deflected. It did, partially blocked by Mokobust. Inbounded to Watson across the line, so that's just a two-pointer, no good. Price able to corral the rebound. Now he's gonna launch this long to Bigler. Ball had a lot of air under it, so able to get back for Box Elder was Meekum, but he fouls Bigler on the shot. No good, Bigler to the line to shoot two. Bigler makes both free throws, 45-41. Advantage to the Bees. Physical battle developing between those two, Lake and Watson. Here's McFarland looking to drive on Perkins, and McFarland uses the glass to get two more for Box Elder. And just a sophomore, a lot of young talent on both of these two teams. Local bus being guarded by Hennessy. Blake dribbles it inside the three-point arc. Now back out to Drew Perkins. Trying to cross Watson over. Perkins for three. That one no good. Lake with the rebound and the putback. Diane Lake, not the biggest kid, but certainly one of the stronger. Goes up strong and has the cleanup points for Northridge on that possession. Inside now to Sever. And Lake able to close down, though couldn't corral the loose ball. Inbounded to Sever. Watson's going to chase this one down all the way back to midline. McFarland pumped the three, then to Watson, who takes it. And a foul away from the ball. Three-pointer no good. But they're going to say that Hennessy got fouled in setting the screen. Inbounded here to Sever. Now this is McFarland working on Colby. Not a lot of room there. Watson, he's going to take a toughly contested shot. And that rebounded by Northridge. Here's Lake. And McFarland came over to close it off. That one does not fall. But Lake will go to the line to shoot two. Second free throw from Lake is good. It's 47-44. Now the box elder lead. 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. And that ball broken up by Mokelbust as he stepped right in front of the Watson pass and then a foul on Watson is trying to get it to Lake. Had some upper body contact. Certainly no harm intent there. That's the second foul on Watson. Just 25 seconds remaining here in the third. It's a three point game and a lot of credit to Northridge won't go away but haven't been able to get much closer than this. Perkins just taking some time off the clock. We're down to 10. Gets it over to Lake. Double team now on Diane Lake. Trying to get around it. And then offensive fouls. He used that off arm, a forearm, to push the defender away. And Lake turns it over with 3.7 seconds left. Meanwhile, that was the fourth foul on Diane Lake. Is this a long inbounds pass to half court? Up ahead to Hennessy. That ball turned over. Mokubus will just. Chuck this ball down the floor. No chance, certainly, on that one. Third quarter comes to an end. 47, 44 Bs as we head to the fourth. To the fourth quarter we go. It's a three-point box elder lead, and it's been the long-range shooting of the Bs that have really helped create this. What a beautiful backdoor cut, and Lake can't finish it off. That was a beautiful play all the way and just left it a little shy. On the other end, McFarland passes out. Now Watson finds it. And you have to believe Watson wants to attack per or not Perkins Lake as Lake has four fouls. Here's Diedrichsen working on Colby and Daniel Diedrichsen with a little floater in the key. Sending the lead back up to five and he's been really good in the post tonight for Box Elder. Perkins on the drive gives it off to Colby. Back to Lake. Bigler now, he's going to work this one inside the key and float that one in. 
Jacob Bigler, last year known much more for his long range shooting and certainly denied as he has five three pointers, but nice job that time of getting the ball close to the rim for a higher percentage shot. That ball almost turned over and we've got a call against Box Elder. Three second call. The Knights, another chance to tie as they trail by three. About the uh, score differential for most of the third. Well, Northridge could never tie nor take the lead. And a foul here called on Sever as Mokobus got tripped up. Sever, not a fan of the call. One and one situation for Dallas Mokobus. This is the front end. Back of the iron and rebounded by McFarland. That was the fourth foul, meanwhile, on Jeff Sever. So he heads to the bench. There's Diedrichsen all alone underneath, and he lays it in. The lead's back up to five. And nice job by Box Elder, really taking advantage before Northridge could get back defensively. And Diedrichsen able to be the benefactor. There's also the... Seventh team foul on Box Elder as Lake tries to draw contact, can't do it, gets the board and a foul called. Blue is going to be offensive on Jace Colby. Loose ball foul. That's the sixth team foul on Northridge and the fourth on Colby. So from this point on, both teams going to be shooting free throws, one in one situation going both ways as it is a five point B lead. About 540 left to play here in the ball game. Looking inside to Diedrichsen and he got Colby out of position. This ball ends up in the air somehow and Watson almost seemed to volleyball set it up. Didn't drop. Lake now looking to drive. Gives off to Colby and a beautiful find by the junior Diane Lake. Finding Colby underneath the hoop, and it's a back to a three-point B lead. And Watson, who has shot the ball so well, he is not taking many shots here as of late. The guy is trying to get involved. The drive by Meekum. He finds Diedrichsen alone. And Diedrichsen has had that shot three or four times in the last three minutes alone. It's paying off well for the purple and white. His shot by Perkins was missed. And then a foul underneath. We'll have to see who it's on. Looks like it is on Box Elders Hennessy. Jace Colby to the line, shooting the one and one. And he misses the front end. 53 48, the Box Elder lead. That was the first foul on Hennessy, so no foul trouble for him. This is Meekum with it. Double team brought on to Watson, and Lake has to be careful. He's got four. So Watson passes out of it. There's Diedrichsen now. Three-pointer on the way from Jeremy Meekum. That one's no good, and Perkins all over that rebound like a bad suit. Beautiful, brings it down the other way behind the back. And then an up and down, I believe. We'll have to see what the call was. Uh, I think they're going to say it was a foul on the floor. So Perkins should go to the line for the one and one as the foul is called on Watson. Excuse me, that foul was actually on Hennessy. That was his second. Perkins made the front end of the one and one. This is the second shot. It is good as well. Again, it's down to three. Box Elders answered the call every time they've been in this situation. Midway through the fourth quarter, four minutes left in the ball game. Fouls, certainly becoming an issue. Mokobus able to break that one up. And then we've got a timeout taken by Box Elder before Hennessy could pass out of it. Ball will stay here with the Bees. This ball inbounded into the backcourt to McFarland. Northridge students trying to cheer on their defense. Bigler went for the seal. Missed it. Now Meekum with the drive. Goes up and that ball was knocked away by Price, but the foul call comes. And going to the line will be Meekum. Hennessy missed his first free throw. The second free throw is good. 
It's a four-point lead. That was the first foul on T.J. Price, seventh team foul. Meanwhile, nine team fouls for Box Elder. So the next foul, and the Knights will be shooting two from here on out. That three-pointer was short by Bigler. Rebound chased down by Mokobust. Keeps the possession for Northridge. Screen set up by Price. Kicked outside to Perkins. Being guarded by Watson. Looks for the baseline drive and a foul called here on Watson. So Perkins will go to the line shooting two. Sever checks back in the game as Perkins missed his first free throw. This is his second attempt. It is good. And again, the Knights pull to within three. I feel like I've said that about 25 times in this fourth quarter. But again, they haven't been able to stop Box Elder from scoring in this situation. Meek him around the screen. And guess who? Diedrichsen, though he missed it. Price is there for the big rebound. Lake looking to push this up the floor against McFarland. What a beautiful reverse lay-in by the junior, Diane Lake. And it is a one-point ball game with 2.50 left here in the game. Diane Lake picked up his fourth foul pretty early in this fourth quarter. He's played very well since then. Three-pointer from Meekham, no good. Rebounded by the Beast Diedrichsen. He was on the floor. Now Watson for three. That one rims out. And a foul going to be called here on Diedrichsen. A loose ball foul. And how about T.J. Price down low off the bench. He has been big for the Knights, and now he goes to the line to shoot free throws. So that was the fourth foul on Diedrichsen. Price missed his first free throw, his second to tie this game up. Back of the iron, loose ball is brought in by Sever. Box Elder clinging to a one point lead. This ball inside to Diedrichsen, he goes up with it. Misses the shot, it was Price defensively. Then that one stripped by Mokobust and a foul called on the floor on Sever, and I think that is the fifth on Jeff Sever. Going to the line is Mokobus, and he has had some big plays, including that one, to stop the shot from Sever, and it is number five on Sever. He's done. Mokobus made the first free throw to knot it up. This is to give Northridge the lead. And he does. The junior Dallas Mokobus said he's had some big plays. He hit the three at the end of the first. He had a nice block a couple minutes ago. Another one right there, and then he almost strips that one out on the floor. And boy, I thought that time that Hennessy was out of bounds. Now a whistle's blow. We'll have to see what the call is. Call timeout taken by Box Elder. Unfortunate to save that possession, because again, I thought Hennessy was out of play. Box Elder to inbound. Watson for three. That one no good. Rebounded by Bigler. 1.45 left, it's a one point night lead and Watson who has shot the ball so well in this fourth quarter has not done so. This is to Price underneath, he will lay that in easily and it's a three point Northridge lead. Really nice patience showed by Price as he got the ball right under, gave the pump fake, allowed the defender to fly right by and then stout defensively as Price as Watson couldn't get the shot off. It will stay here underneath for Box Elder. Inbounded to Watson. That ball is no good. Watson with his own putback. Price came up to take a swat at the first shot. Certainly affected it. Watson not giving up on the play. How about the spin move by Lake? He gets fouled by McFarland. And Diane Lake to the line for two. That was the fourth foul on McFarland. Lake missed his first free throw. This is his second at... The line makes it two-point lead for the Knights. Bigler has a seat on the bench as Jace Colby checks in for him. One minute remaining. It's a two-point night lead. Watson nowhere to go, trying to get around Colby. Floats this one up, guess who, Price? But he couldn't keep it in play. Got credit for the block, couldn't maintain possession. Inbounded to Watson. He tried to thread the needle between two knights, and it was Colby who broke it up. Mokobus now with 40 seconds left and a two-point lead for Northridge. With no shot clock, you kind of have to wonder 
if the Bees should start fouling. McFarland coming up to apply some pressure, passing out of it easily, and there's no reason that Northridge has to take a shot. And right now, Coach McKee finally going to start calling for the foul, and they will foul Drew Perkins. First free throw was good for Perkins. This is to make it a four-point lead for Northridge, and he does. The sophomore was solid at the line. It's 60 to 56, 20 seconds left. Watson has picked up his dribble, gives it to McFarland, and a foul on Colby. I believe that is going to be it for Jace Colby. One and one situation for McFarland, and he missed it. Rebounded by Lake, 12 seconds left, a four-point lead, and Bigler gets fouled to the line for two for Bigler. First free throw was good from Bigler, the second good as well. 10 seconds left, it's a six-point ball game. Watson bringing it up the floor quickly, going to launch one from the volleyball line. That one no good, tapped out, and Jacob Bigler ends up with it. The man who scored the first three gets the last two, and the Northridge Knights end the top of Utah Classic with a big win, victory over the Box Elder Bees, 62-56. Again, our final score here in the consolation game of the top of Utah Classic, the Northridge Knights have defeated the Box Elder Bees, 62-56. And this was just an entertaining game all around. For those of you who wonder some, who some of the best three-point shooters in the state are, I think we had a good display tonight. It was Jacob Bigler and then also uh, Watson, Shad Watson from Box Elder. These two, boy, they went at it for those first, uh, first two quarters, actually. Saw lights out shooting from both of them. Bigler started the game off with a three. Watson had three or four in that first half alone. Bigler had four in the first half. The distance shooting for both these two teams looked really, really impressive. It wasn't just those two. They had help all around from their teammates. Sever looked really good for Box Elder in that first half. The perimeter games looked great. Then came the second half, and the perimeter shooting kind of went away. You had a feeling it might. These two teams, this being the third game in three days, and at that point, the legs started to get a little tired. It was a little more difficult for those distant shots. Box Elder found a lot of success down low with Diedrichson. He was huge for them in this second half. Had a lot of really nice opportunities from four feet and inside. A lot of lay-ins, a lot of opportunities to manipulate that defense of the Knights, get easy put-ins. But the Knights just would not go away. They, they kept this game close the entire time. They never let it get beyond three to five points in that second half. And then finally, in the last three minutes of this game was when they were finally able to chip away. They would get to within three, couldn't get over the hump. Get to within three, Box Elder would score. Well, in those last couple minutes, they found a way to break through that, outscoring the Box Elder Bees by nine in the fourth quarter. And it was T.J. Price off the bench. The Knights may have found themselves a center here tonight as T.J. Price was huge. He had a couple big blocks late. He had some offensive putbacks late. Uh, Diane Lake really got aggressive. We saw Bigler be a little more aggressive with some dot drives inside. Wasn't relying on that outside shot so much. Meanwhile, Shad Watson continued to shoot the jumper. And with all reason, we mentioned he came into this ball game averaging uh, nearly 25 points a game. He is a shooter, but uh, could not get that shot late. We saw some rare missed shots from him late in this ball game. Northridge was able to capitalize on the inside, down low on the blocks, and that was really the difference in this ball game as the Knights pull away here in the consolation game. These two teams, they may be very tough in their regions. Region one certainly going to be competitive with the Knights as this is a team that's still kind of coming together. You get that sense. This is a good win for them. They found some key pieces, learn a little bit more about what they can and can't do. And for the Bees, this is a team that may be flying a little bit under the radar tonight, a very impressive showing. And you have to think that if they hadn't played three games worth of a 32-minute basketball, they may have had a stronger finish here at the end. But either way, uh, they look certain to be a, a contender in what should be a very fun Region 5 this season. But again, tonight it is the Northridge Knights who, with that armor, withstand the sting of the Bees, 62-56 on our final from Northridge High. For Vince Francis, my name is Dane Stewart. Thank you for joining us on another edition of High School Rewind, available only on Xfinity On Demand. We will see you next time.